It's a Sweet 16 showdown tonight from Rip City, and a number one seed will be taking the floor for USC. It's the first time in 30 years a freshman leads the way against Baylor. Very accustomed to this stage with the winner heading to the Elite Eight. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One and a pair of programs with championship pedigrees tonight. Two-time national champion USC, three-time champion Baylor Bears. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Portland. Game one of our doubleheader coming up tonight. Beth Mowens, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, and Juju Watkins, who leads our hit parade out here in Portland tonight. I tell you what, I kind of like having our names in the same sentence <laughs> as Juju. Man, what an incredible star power package she provides on the offensive end. And she's just a part of what we've seen today, where the product and the promotion have come together and we're celebrating our game at a high level. Yeah, the Xfinity most reliable player is gonna be Juju Watkins looking to grab the brass ring for SC as a freshman, just like LA legend Cheryl Miller did over 40 years ago. I mean, check this out, Beth. She's second in the nation in scoring and she's going to score in a variety of ways. Off screening action, in transition, catch and shoot, off the bounce, to the mid range, and off her defense as well. She's fun to watch, and she's going to fill it up today. They'll go up against Baylor, who brings it with Jada Walker coming off a career night for the Bears on the road in the second round as we send it over to Angel Gray on the Trojans supporting cast. Ladies, we have witnessed that Juju Watkins is a scoring machine, and she's more than capable of taking over games. But Lindsey Gottlieb shared with us that their success in this tournament has shown that she doesn't need to do it alone, starting with a few of her Ivy League transfers. They have been big impact players for her program this season. Mackenzie Forbes has scored over 20 points in the last three games. Caleb Padilla has also shot over 40% from the three-point line in this tournament, and their general in the paint. Rhea Marshall continues to be their voice voice, their reason, and making sure that she's keeping everyone accountable. If they execute these specific roles, they relieve Juju Watkins offensively. Home whites for USC and the road greens for Baylor. Underway in Portland for a spot in the Elite Eight. Coming up against the winner of our next game, Duke and UConn. And the pull up is good for Jada Walker. This is a small lineup on the floor for Baylor, but they have outstanding quickness. It doesn't mean they can't score in the post with a non-traditional post play. They can play off the bounce, they can get in the paint, and they can invert their guards. There are your starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Watkins down the lane. Walker number 11 with a basketball is the point guard. She's a lefty and she's coming off that career high game. She can get into the paint off of anybody's defense. Rhea Marshall with the rebound for USC. Trojans, their first Sweet 16 in 30 years. And Walker off the mark on the second shot. They are winners of 14 of their last 15 games, including that Pac-12 tournament championship that garnered them a one seed in this region. There's a look at their head coach, Lindsey Gottlieb. And uh, the first number one seed for them since 1986. This is the third team that she has taken to an NCAA tournament. UC Santa Barbara, Cal, and Southern Cal. Of course, that last trip with the Cal Bears uh, included a Final Four trip. Yeah, 2013. We saw a mismatch in the last possession. And look at the defense by Juju right here. Walker with Watkins defending. Short on the shot there from Little Page Bugs. And another opportunity. This is a scrappy Baylor team. They will rely on their quickness to be able to stay in this game. They have to make the game athletic. And they beat teams on the boards. Their plus seven rebounding margin on the season. The miss there corralled by Rhea Marshall. Averages a double-double per game for SC. Rhea Marshall was in a hard hedge on that ball screen coverage. Typically, she's in drop coverage, but she's going to roll every time she sets a screen. And Rhea Marshall is number 13 in white, Beth. Mid-range pull-up won't go. The rebound and the run. This is something that Baylor is looking for. Dribbling out of the double to find the shooter, Sarah Andrews, weak side for three. 70 made threes coming into the game, and that's the Baylor transition game. They probe that baseline and throw the skip 
across the baseline to a wide open catch and shoot three. Third year in a row, they have set a new school record. They have 250 triples on the year. And looking for a steal score again, Walker from Andrews. These two guards are small and they are quick and they are feisty. They are going to be here for 40 minutes for Nikki Collin. Fourth place finish this year in the Big 12 Conference, but then went on the road to beat Virginia Tech in the second round. They have won eight of their last nine, Debbie, and they've done it with a lineup change to feature their defense. Yeah, Dre Edwards, who is their leading scorer, comes off the bench, but this is what Nikki Collin calls a better way to start the game because she's doing it through a defensive lens. Bella Fontleroy is the player that stepped into the starting lineup, and they've only lost once since. Watkins, that one won't go. Only better scorer in the country this year is Caitlin Clark at Iowa. Good hustle by Blackwell to keep that ball alive and give Baylor an extra possession. Fontleroy, that won't go. Little Page bugs big on the glass, and then the block for Marshall. Look at the hops on Dariana Little Page Bucks. Here's Kayla Padilla, the grad transfer out of Torrance, California, return back home from the Ivy League. Juju's gonna try to get back to that right hand. They're going two-man game on the naked side right here with Marshall. What about that turnaround jump shot and one. Actually, the foul is off the ball on the rebound. I believe on Blackwell. There's Nikki Collin now in her third season. Three consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament. Big 12 championship a few years ago. Also had a stint in the WNBA with the Atlanta Dream before returning to the college game. We got two really good X and O coaches. You know, the way you evaluate coaches, or I do, can you recruit, can you plan, prepare, and then get your teams ready in practice, and then can you adjust in game? Both these coaches are excellent at all three phases. That foul was on Fauntleroy on the rebound, her first. Watkins off the bounce, hangs and hits. Oh, it's going to be a thing of beauty watching that all day. Prep National Player of the Year coming out of high school and now the National Freshman of the Year. Starring in her first season at SC. One on three, she'll keep, steps through and knocks another one down. So cautious not to over penetrate. Incredible body control in transition. 6-0 SC run. Very rarely does she get called for a charge. She's so good in tight spaces off the bounce. Oh, what a buzz there is around her in Los Angeles. Pull up is good from Little Page Bugs. Last year's Big 12 Freshman of the Year. Similar numbers this season. Now, all I would need to hear is Tina Thompson, Cheryl Miller, Cynthia Cooper going, hey, this kid's special. That's all the advertisement you really need if you know about those Naismith Hall of Famers. Yeah, Lisa Leslie. Another one who started SC, then went on to Olympic glory and the WNBA championships. Knocked out of bounds, 1.6 on the shot clock. Watch Juju moving without the basketball. Off the bounce to the mid-range. Nice floater inside. They had to lob to try and beat the shot clock buzzer. Almost drops for Marshall. And now the push. Anna Van Geitenbeek coming in off the bench. Gives them another shooter. And an offensive foul going to be called on Baylor. Asia Blackwell. Baylor with a one-point lead here early in the first quarter. And it's the Juju Watkins show in transition right here. The body control, the finish, the bucket. Well, some of the all-time greats at USC through the years. Of course, it started with their back-to-back -back national champions in 1983 and 1984, led by Cheryl Miller and Cynthia Cooper. And then after that, Lisa Leslie and Tina Thompson went on to fame beyond Southern Cal. 
as we check out our Get More, brought to you by Geico. None of those guys scored as well as Juju did in her freshman season. And as you can see, she is uh, inching closer to Kelsey Mitchell for second all time in NCAA freshman scoring. If she drops 38 tonight, she would take over as uh, the best freshman scorer in history. I love coming off the timeout where Lindsey Gottlieb draws up a backdoor play to try to relieve some pressure. And yes, when you're in that conversation like Juju with all those <laughs> USC greats, that's impressive. And uh, I feel like I've seen all of those players play. And I played against Cheryl Miller, not that she would consider playing against me, <laughs> but. <laughs> She scored against you? Yeah. You played against yeah. her? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, been such a bittersweet season around the Pac-12, knowing this is the last one. And they have, what, five teams into the Sweet 16, two remaining with Oregon State already into the Elite Eight. They'll play South Carolina tomorrow, and then this Southern Cal team. Last touch by the Trojans. It'll go to Baylor. Two really good backdoor plays where Juju reads the D so well. I mean, the first one was a call. The second mm -hmm. one was her ability to recognize the overplay, trying to almost deny her the basketball, which is really hard to do, because she moves so well without the ball. Here's Edwards, their leading scorer, coming in off the bench to Fauntleroy. And Watkins has the rebound weak side. She joined that list of legends, by the way, All-America first team. And the first time ever, she and Hannah Hidalgo at Notre Dame, the first two rookies to ever be named yeah. AP top five. And that freshman class that we are experiencing this year is special, yeah. and we're seeing one of them here today. First time it's happened in the same season, two freshmen together. Of course, another one of them is coming up next, Paige Beckers and UConn. We'll take on Duke in the second game of our double dip, and then the winners will meet up on Monday night after the Iowa LSU game. My goodness. Ratings bonanza, Debbie, on Monday night. <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun to watch what's happened to our game. The explosion. Yep. Product's always been good. Mm -hmm. More people paying attention. Rematch of that national championship game. Bugs been able to really dial it in from outside. They've missed their last five shots of the Bears after starting four for seven. Padilla will give it a go. Nice play by Fauntleroy to tip it out to Andrews. Sarah will try. The only four-time, or excuse me, four-year player that's been at Baylor all four of those years. Southern Cal's D is forcing Baylor into a lot of perimeter shots, a lot of jump shots right now. They're not getting anything in the paint. Marshall back out to Padilla for three. Padilla is an incredible catch and shoot, and when she gets her feet set under her shoulders, she is a terrific three-point shooter. Long rebound, finds its way to Edwards, weaving inside to draw the foul. Dre Edwards comes in the game. She is a handful to defend in the middle third of the floor. And Nikki Collin has a tremendous offensive package that she runs for the six-foot graduate student, the transfer from Kentucky. First foul on Marshall. You know, sometimes the portal gets a bad name, but sometimes it works out real well for all parties. And she has found a home here, started most of the season. But for these players that ha get a second or third chance at a new at a new home, Debbie, they just want to win. And that's what she yeah. was telling us the other day. I'd say the same thing for the Ivy League transfers that Southern Cal has. Yeah, three I mean, of them. It's three of them that, you know, the Ivy League doesn't have the graduate transfer opportunity. So you got to go somewhere else. And the three of them who have played against each other for years are playing together and really enjoying being around the Juju Watkins experience on the floor. On and off the court, I should say. Uh, you know, hey, Los Angeles, not a bad spot. Of course, Lindsay Gottlieb, a graduate of Brown. Yep. She's an Ivy Leaguer herself. And Lindsay has a great story. Her, her playing career cut short by injury, and that forced her to become a coach. And she was able to take her passion there. Look at that acceleration, Beth, into that handoff. Juju gets to the right side of the floor and pulls up. And then stop on a dime and pull up and stick the J. That's what I'm talking about off the ball. 
That's only eight points in eight minutes on 50% shooting so far for Juju in her first appearance in the Sweet 16. And Edwards at the other end for Baylor. Behind the back, lost the handle and turns it over. Good relocation by Van Geitenbeek. And the long rebound to Padilla. Pull up, transition three, good. Mackenzie Forbes, who's been on a tear of late, over 20 per game, her last four outings. Walker off the bounce and gets to the rim. She gets to her left hand with that explosive change of pace in that quick first step. Another transfer from Kentucky who is now two points shy of 1,000 for her career. And Lexington and Waco. And too much body work there from Yaya Felder. Watch Juju right here, and she's got to come off this dribble handoff, and watch when she turns the corner. Watch the body control. She engages the second level. There's a switch there, and she pulls up and sticks it. It's a great job by Juju to read the defense once again. High level IQ play with a skill set to match. Averaging 25 points per game through the first couple of rounds and has gotten great support from the rest of the Trojans. They have not needed to rely on her quite as much in the postseason for their success. And Forbes is a big reason why. Well, Sarah Andrews that time on Juju Watkins, and Forbes is going to have to look to make plays because once Juju gives it up or gets out of the scoring area, someone else has to be able to make a play off the Baylor defense. Off the cross, Walker trying to make the pass, and then a collision out top with 4.4 to go. Kayla Williams did not recognize the time left on the clock there. Four point four for Baylor to work with. This is where Nikki Collin is really good in situational offense on a sideline out of bounds. Oh, look at that play by Andrews. Open look, long on the shot. And that one after the buzzer. 18 to 16, USC with the lead over Baylor through one. We'll hear from Nikki Collin in just a moment. And up next, we are proud to recognize Dove, who is partnering with ESPN to level up women's sports. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? 18 to 16, Southern Cal over Baylor as we send it over to Angel Gray with Nikki Collin. Coach, USC was able to hit their last four shots. Juju Watkins has eight points in 10 minutes. How can your defense be more disruptive going forward? I thought in transition, I think we can congest more on her. I don't think our switches were good enough on Forbes there late. Um, and we've got to make some shots so that they're not constantly in transition. We've gotten good shots. We're just not putting the ball in the basket. That was going to be my follow-up. Just offensively, how can you be a little bit more in rhythm? Yeah, we're getting open shots. That's a great shot for Sarah there. I thought Jana got a couple open looks. You know, we just got to knock those shots down. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, just 36% shooting and only one of seven from downtown for the Bears. Their 20th straight appearance, three national championships when Kim Mulkey was in Waco. And they are regulars this deep into the tournament and carrying that Big 12 banner here into the Sweet 16, coming off of their victory on the road over Virginia Tech in the second round. Well, the last time we had a stoppage to play, USC or Southern Cal came off the bench looking to go back door and trying to set up Juju Watkins. And let's see what they come up with this time. Eight points on four of eight shooting for Juju. Fauntleroy will be defending Juju Watkins in this set. This is a different set. We haven't seen them space the floor like this. A lot of misdirection for Lindsay Gottlieb. Nice screen and roll around and down. 
down inside for Clarice Akunwafo, the junior from Englewood. That's an advantage that you, uh, Southern Cal has coming off the bench. They've got a little bit of size, and Baylor really does it. There's a switch to a smaller defender. See, Dre Edwards has got to recognize that that switch is coming, and she's going to have to be a little more patient and complete that play. Help comes, forcing Juju to pick up the dribble. The drop off for Akinwafu, back out to Watkins. Andrews May got a piece of that one. On the run, good find by Andrews and a foul as Felder tried to finish. This is a great advance pass by Sarah Andrews who has a really good command of what Nikki Collin wants to run offensively. Look at her eyes to the rim immediately upon a securing the basketball. And that's where the athleticism for Baylor can come into play, Beth. They are got to run the floor hard every time to put pressure on Southern Cal's defense. That was the first foul on Forbes. So Felder to the line, the transfer from Ohio. Six of their top uh, nine in their rotation are transfers, and they have gelled quickly. Well, that's where, like you said earlier, the portal can be a good thing yeah. for players get a second opportunity in a different place, a different style of play, different academic interest. Or I think academics is still a part of the equation. I'm not really sure. <laughs> in most instances. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, nice cut. Watkins triple teamed with the ball in the lane. Has to bring it back out. on the shot clock. She spins, finds some space, and knocks it down. See, that's what I'm talking about earlier, Beth, about keeping Juju on the right side. Look, she's going to go right. She's right-hand dominant. Instead of trying to force her left, you've got to load up your defense, keep her on the right side. She's going to make tough shots. you just got to try to limit some things that she does really well. Interesting, because common sense would say, right, take away yep. her strong hand or dominant I, hand. She's going to come back to the right. That's yep. her tendency. So just funnel your defense to try that kind of strategy against her early and see if it works. I mean, you got to try something try different. Something. She can drop 51 on your head if you're not careful, like she did against Stanford in the regular season, an SC freshman record. Hard off the back iron, offensive rebound won't go. Snared by Edwards. See, you play the percentages. She goes left that time, she doesn't score. Felder draws another foul off the bounce here, back to the line. This is what I'm talking about. Watch Juju Watkins right here. She's going to come here, and then she's going to go back to the right. She's going to spin, and there's a ball screen at the elbow. She gets a wide open look. It's a beautiful looking jump shot. Look at the arc on that shot. She can stop and go straight up, too. It's a very athletic play. That was Caitlin Davis that was able to run some interference for her, too, and made Fauntleroy go underneath. And Watkins will catch her breath early in this second quarter. Felder able to convert. Well, we've already seen here in the early going, Baylor able to utilize their uh, quickness, Debbie, able to rebound and run. So they're sticking pretty close to their game plan, but as we heard Nikki say, got to start knocking some of these shots down. And for USC, where do they turn without Watkins in the game? Felder with a reach in at midcourt. That's her second. Well, they go with a package with Mackenzie Forbes with the ball on top of the floor. They've got an offensive package for her right here. I'd go right back inside to Akawafu. Take advantage of her size. See, they pull her away from the bucket here to open up some space in the middle third. They're going to get a foul here on Baylor trying to force their way through the screen. Is that on Bella Fauntleroy? It is, and that's her second. She will check out. Fauntleroy getting over the top of that screen. There's a little hook right there, and that's why the foul got called. It didn't look like much contact from... Nikki Collins' angle, but that's what the official saw. Nice long drive denied. Good defense by Bugs. 
Forbes fouled. And for the Trojans, their first trip to the free throw line tonight. 22-19, our score here in Portland. USC with the lead over Baylor. Winner is moving on to the Elite Eight. We already know on the other side tomorrow, there's your action from Albany, 1 Eastern on ABC. Undefeated South Carolina taking on Oregon State, followed by Texas and North Carolina State. The Wolfpack men and women trying to both get to the Final Four this year. Neither team ranked in the preseason. Both teams making an incredible run through the postseason, especially on the men's side. But the NC State women and Westmore, what a job. Picked preseason number eight in the ACC. And here they are in the Elite Eight. Eliminated Stanford. Of course, Texas on the brink of a Final Four trip, even though they lost their best player, Rory Harmon, before Christmas. And they've done an outstanding job coming, uh, coming back together. Edwards with the jumper. Of course, South Carolina, I mean, holy smokes. The defense has always been good. The offense this year, amazing. And that matchup with Scott Ruick's Oregon State defense is going to be a fun one. Well, head coach Dawn Staley has won two national championships when she's had two-way guards, meaning guards that can play D and score. And she has that this year. That's the action for the first two spots in the Final Four tomorrow. Let's revisit that Edwards three. Dre Edwards does such a good job of moving without the ball, gets a piece of the paint, and then relocates to the perimeter. And that's a beautiful looking jump shot for a 34% three point shooter. She's got six, her 11 points per game, that's best on the team, and now she's bringing it off the bench. And that has worked real well for Baylor. Got hot late in the year. Andrews off the hesitation, looking for Edwards again. Now they're pick and pop off that ball screen action. Felder on the drive, and that's a walk. is back out there for USC. Here she comes to the top. 12 and white, the national freshman of the year. We run a little floppy action on the baseline. Felder defending, help comes. She splits it and then lost it out of bounds. They bring the screen for her to go left and then she comes back to the right and that's when she turns it over. Good defense, that's the congestion that Nikki Collin wants her team to play with that she told Angel Gray. Shot blocked by Padilla. Forbes. Short, tried to tip it up and in and it goes. Boy, is she playing with some confidence, emerging as their second go-to behind Watkins. She's got nine here in the first half. Andrews, sidestep three. Offensive board kept alive. Little Paige Bugs. She's been active. She's very athletic. Oh, look at the quicks right here. Oh, look at the convergence on the ball. Watkins, SC with numbers. Goes to the right and gets fouled. And the player who makes uh, uh, takes the most free throw attempts in the country will get her first go from 15 feet away. First foul on Edwards. It looks effortless up the floor, doesn't it? It's a glide from Juju Watkins. It's the way she advances the ball up the court. She pushes it ahead. Such a great change of pace. Angel? Well, W, you said it's a glide. Lindsey Gottlieb said she's just a pro. Since she walked in in her first day of working out, she said what makes her so different from everyone else is that every rep is the same. Everything that she does is pro ready. Getting to the basket, how she prepares herself for each game. That's why it looks so effortless right now. Remember yesterday when we were talking to Coach Gottlieb about the turning point after the Washington loss, the yep. next game she had 51 against Stanford, right? Juju came to practice with the same effort she's always brought and the team rallied around. Look, we got we can't be playing poorly against Washington. We got to take care of the ball, and Juju can help us get there. And they all accepted it. Really, a, that's the professional mindset yep. that Angel's referring to. 
You see to the last points there for Watkins, now tied with Kelsey Mitchell's number two all time for a freshman scoring in a single season. Offensive rebound, and an easy two there for Southern Cal and Rhea Marshall. Caitlin Davis, the transfer from Columbia, doing a nice job at tracking that rebound. Andrews, and she'll head to the line. Largest lead right now, Debbie, for USC. 421 to go here in the first half. It's the effort by Mackenzie Forbes when Juju was on the bench to keep the scoring going. 6-0 run by Southern Cal. Thank you, ladies. Juju with a dozen points to lead all scores, but help from Forbes with nine points and Rhea Marshall with nine rebounds. Wouldn't be surprised to see a little full court pressure here, uh, pending a made shot, but still full court pressure anyway. I like it. I, I think they've got to speed the game up right now in the next four minutes. That's what Nikki Collins is going to try to do with this defensive effort on the floor and this team on the floor. This is her defensive look. Watkins, nice backdoor, drops it off I mean, for Marshall. Beth, the backdoor, she reads the second level, rotating to help. She avoids the charge and still drops it off. Ten-point lead now for USC. I don't care how much film you watch and how much you simulate it. It is really tough to make that play. Andrews. They have just two of 11 now from downtown. And, and one of the ways that you can speed the game up is not just with your defense, but by your acceleration offensively. Like the sets that they're running right here, and they're getting good shots. They've got to finish. Just 28% shooting for Baylor in the first half, and an offensive foul on the drive. Charge taken by Felder. That's going to be on Forbes. That's her second. It's a charge. And remember, the cylinder has changed. So it's right underneath the basket. And in, on this court, there's no restricted area like you see on home courts, because that's not a part of the game anymore on the women's side. Little Paige Bugs. And she had to pull up jump shot, and then she drove into the shot blocker. Oh, oh nice, nice move. Andrews splits and goes to the left. Timeout USC. Low to the ground, controlling the ground. Watch the handle by Sarah Andrews. She reads the screen right here. Marshall steps up, but the split and high off the glass. Here's tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. It's the defensive effort on Juju Watkins. Now watch, she catches at the three-point line, and you come with a long closeout. She's going to blow by that. And then when you try to take away the middle and force her back, the screen comes. You're supposed to jump out on that switch right there. Instead, they go under, and Juju does not over-penetrate. She reads the second level. She's not worried about who's guarding her, Beth. She's reading already into the paint, seeing where the rotation is coming from. 12 points and plus 10, if you like the plus yes. minus numbers at this point. That's all in 15 minutes of work here in the first half. USC playing in their first Sweet 16 in 30 years. You got to go back to 1994. First time they've had a number one seed since the mid 80s in the Renaissance in Los Angeles under Lindsey Gottlieb and of course the arrival of Juju Watkins. They've got the number one recruiting class in the country coming in next year. Things are looking very bright in Los Angeles. And while Nikki Collin picking up full court pressure, trying to speed the game up, Lindsey Gottlieb counters with her big lineup and Juju at the three, who she inverts to the block. Scrap for the loose ball down on the deck and a held ball will go the other way to Baylor. Two bigs on the floor for Coach Gottlieb right now. Which means Nikki Collins is going to put those bigs in ball screen action up the floor right here. Oh. 
Andrews curls and walks. A little impatient by Baylor. Just Padilla. their third turnover. Sorry, Beth. Padilla, Padilla running the point. Jan Jana Van Geitenbeek defending. Both bigs up top, and there's a whistle off the ball drawn by Juju. They're trying to defend her. I mean, you can put Juju anywhere on the floor, and she can have an impact. She puts pressure on your defense, whether she's outside the three-point line, inverting to the block like the last two sets that Coach Gottlieb has run. So with that small lineup, what Coach Gottlieb is doing is putting a bigger lineup on the floor and then just inverting Juju to the block. Angel Gray. And Juju is just so aware of everything that's happening on the floor, especially who is guarding her on the defensive end in that last, the last two series. Jada Walker was defending her the last two series. She has gone to the block and tried to post up. So we're seeing how she's trying to change the game at different levels for herself. And she's just moved into solo possession of number two all time on the, uh, the NCAA single season freshman scoring list. Only Tina Hutchinson of San Diego State has ever scored more in her freshman year. 15-footer off the mark. The cold shooting continues for Baylor. And another foul drawn by Juju. She so, gets to the free throw line yeah. eight times a game, makes seven of them. That's the most of anybody in the country. And that's now two fouls, Debbie, on Jada Walker. Yeah, she's ninth in the nation in drawing fouls uh, off the bounce or inverting to the block. She makes you pay there, too. She's 84% from the line. Juju's already four for four tonight. Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship continues with more Sweet 16 coverage. Duke and UConn still to come here in Portland. And we'll run you all the way through the National Championship on April 7th to crown a, another winner. Every game is on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Defending champs, LSU still in the field. Unbeaten South Carolina still in the field. Caitlin Clark still in the field for Iowa. And one of these two teams trying to advance to the Elite Eight here tonight. Baylor is four for 10 on layups. That's not how you pull the upset. Mm -hmm. You gotta finish those shots around the rim. Off the Watkins miss, a minute and a half to go, and a frustration foul for Juju way out top by the hash. And she immediately chastises herself. That's her first. You can gamble once. That's it. No more gambling. You'll give her one, one yeah, time? I'll give All her right. one. I'm sure Coach Gottlieb gives her one. Maybe in the second half we get to the fourth quarter. Maybe she gets another, depending on her foul situation. Well, the foul situation is going to be a massive story leading into that LSU-Iowa showdown, of course, from you what mean, happened in the championship game a year ago. You mean the whistle? Mm. Going to be critical. Let's hope it doesn't become that. Yep. because that's showcasing two of the best players and two of the best teams. Yep. Angel Reese had another double-double tonight. Flaugé Johnson is one of the contenders for MOP of this NCAA tournament, if she can keep it going. And of course, Clark messed around, almost got another triple-double tonight in their big win over Colorado. Jumper is good. They need to open that three-point door. It's been locked. I mean, they keep the ball alive on the offensive boards. And a nice stick by Asia Blackwell. 7-0 run for the Bears to tighten it up here. Final minute of the first half. Watkins blocked by Edwards, who came over to help. And then she kicked it off her foot. I mean, that was a two-for-one opportunity for USC. They're going to come right back to Juju. She'll give it up. Taylor Bigby. See, that's a terrible way shot. Off. And Padilla is able to clean it up. Shot clock's off here for the Bears. Oh, and an 
offensive foul called on the screen. And that's going to give SC the ball back here, 5.8 to go. Nikki Collin has been looking for a flop call. We can see right there, what, is that an illegal screen? Because that's what they called. Yeah. Baylor certainly didn't think so. So all eyes on Juju here with 5.8 to go. 15 in the first half. She'll take it in the backcourt and go to work. Double teamed, Watkins launches. Well defended by Baylor. 37 to 31, our score at the half. The number one seed Trojans with the lead over the five seed Baylor Bears here in Regional Three in Portland. Winner will advance to the Elite Eight to face either UConn or Duke. That game's still to come tonight here at Moda Center. And let's send it over to Angel Gray. McKenzie, for this first half, you've held them to 32% defensively, but they went on a 7-0 run. What needs to change on that end to tighten things up? Yeah, we just have to lock in every possession. Um, they really are fast in transition, so we can't have any moments where we're feeling ourselves because we made a shot. We have to all sprint back and build a wall. You also said one of the keys coming in is making sure that you dominate the boards, understanding their length on that side. How would you assess how you've done in the first half? Uh, I think we could be a lot better. I think C came in from the bench and gave us a great lift, uh, getting active on the boards, but uh, we all got to box out so we can get out and run. Thanks, McKenzie. Thank you, guys. Six-point lead for SC into the locker room over Baylor. Juju Watkins leading all scores with 15 points in 19 minutes. Sweet 16 coverage continues. Let's get you back to the studio. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. March Madness in Portland here this afternoon. 37 to 31 USC with the lead over Baylor as we get set to start the third quarter. I'm Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli and Angel Gray. Juju Watkins able to do her thing in that first uh, half for USC. I mean, she can go where she wants with the ball. They do such a great job of playing with her when she doesn't have the ball. She moves so well. And I think Baylor's got to speed the game up. I think they play yeah. best when they're playing fast. They got to finish around the rim also. All right, let's uh, check out right now how they are fueling the run brought to you by Wendy's. Well, when you take a look at Juju, this is what I'm talking about, a package off the ball. Look at the way they enter at the elbow and then it's a hard back cut, which she sets up so well and drops it off after she reads the rotation. This plays in transition. Look at the body control, step around the defense, get to the front of the rim and finish, and then screen, and usually the screener's open in the middle third. They put her in a package where she can get to the rim off the screen, and then in the mid range, in the first half, she is four for seven from the floor. Tonight's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Forbes and Watkins have combined for 24 points. Baylor unable to get its three point game going. They have been balanced through the first 20 minutes, seven of the nine into the game have scored. 20 minutes to go for a spot in the Elite Eight. The winner will face either UConn or Duke on Monday night after the Iowa LSU National Championship rematch in Albany. Bunch of players with two fouls in that first half for Baylor. No one in serious trouble. Walker, bounce pass, short corner. Little Page Bugs won't drop. Really good defense that time by USC. Doing a nice job of tagging the roll and then getting back and recovering to shooters. Forbes steps back, short. And the rebound corralled by Blackwell. And pushed with Walker, who's coming off that 28-point performance in the second round. Six points in the first half. Little Page Bugs, mid-range. That's what I mean about speeding the game up, Beth. You can push in transition. You can naturally get some mismatches that you might be able to go with some quick hitters offensively. Watkins gives it up, gets it right back. This is when you feel like you're on an island. See, she, there's a pass-through screen. She doesn't really like to bring a screen to the ball because she doesn't like two to the ball. But a nice find inside, wide open for the lay-in for Caitlin Davis. That's a couple of the Ivy League transfers teaming up. 
found a new home out west. Baylor's so good on those step-up screen actions. That's part of their quick hitter package in transition. They're going to really put some pressure on USC in the second half by getting downhill. One and done on that trip. Let's see if they set something up here and get a touch for Bug. She's got the hot hand. A couple of buckets quickly here to start the third. I don't think Jada Walker's been able to get going yet either, coming off that career-high 28 points in the Virginia Tech win. Keeps the dribble alive. The bounce pass to Blackwell for the lane. It's just a really good take by Walker to get a piece of the paint and Blackwell to make herself available. Off the screen, the roll, righty layup is good. That was a hard screen. You got Juju lifted, you got shooters in the corner, you go screen and roll, middle third. Walker, oh, tough find. And he's able to get it inside to Bugs. Things are heating up here quickly in the third and with the pace. Yeah, Beth, that's exactly it. That's the pace that Baylor needs to be successful. Back within a basket. Watkins, deep three, got it. Too much space. 18 for Juju, that's her first triple. Bugs off the bounce, good. And a shake, a, a nod of her head. She is feeling it right now. Everything is downhill. The pace has picked up. Baylor being very aggressive especially in the middle third. She's got eight already in this quarter. Watkins will try and follow a three with another one. Uh -oh. 21 for Juju Watkins. They flatten it all out and let her go one-on-one. -on -one. Trying to join a very short list of players in their freshman season, trying to lead their team to a final four in a national championship. Oh, a nice spin. Nice move, everything but the finish. And Blackwell ends up on the switch because she's trying to shadow up the floor. Hands down, Juju going with a little heat check. Not hot enough. The quick counter, Andrews. Side step three, and that's good. Six for eight to start out this second half for Baylor. I love switching sides of the floor in transition. It puts so much pressure on your transition defense. And it leads to a wide open triple for Andrews. Shooting it much better here in this third quarter. Hawkins, Bugs, draws her on the switch. Nice drop off and the lay in is good for Rhea Marshall. Don't you just love that Lindsey Gottlieb can go one four low, put the ball in Juju's hands and say, go to work. A couple of assists for her and a turnover here for Baylor. Operating in space right here. You got one in the dunker spot, two in the corners. And you don't bring two and let her go one on one and then switching sides in transition leads to a catch and shoot three. Not as demonstrative as some of the other big time scorers we see around the country as Watkins. Quite often a little stone faced. There's no antics. It's a bucket and a get back on defense. It's no too small, no three goggles. None of that stuff happening for Juju. <laughs> She's just scoring and playing some D next. Oh, look who's on deck. Beckers, the Big East Player of the Year and Scholar Athlete of the Year is ready to go with UConn on a quest for her first national championship and make it a dozen for UConn. They are back in the Sweet 16 where they were eliminated last year and trying to take it one more step against one of the great defenses in the country, the Duke Blue Devils. Right now, it's Juju Watkins, our current star of the day and We've already seen Angel Reese get a double-double and a win 
against uh, UCLA. Caitlin Clark went off against Colorado. And Becker's coming up next here on ESPN. All Americans all day long on the road to the Final Four. What do you think of that next matchup coming up, Diddy? Oh, boy. Can Duke use their athleticism to be able to defend in the quarter court? There's nothing easy going to happen in that game for either team. All five starters for UConn because of all those injuries are playing over 30 minutes. Baylor outscoring USC here in the third. They're shooting 80% from the floor in the first five plus minutes. I think the adjustment for Nikki Collin is speeding it up and it has worked. It's what we thought they needed to do. The game just seemed to slow down a little bit. Plus they didn't finish around the rim. Now they're finishing. Edwards, nice hesitation. The kick out, looking for three. They're getting a piece of the paint almost on every possession to set up their scoring. That's what USC was able to do in the first half. Good box out by Andrews to keep the taller rebounder away and that allowed Bugs to get to it. Every once in a while there's a possession where Juju doesn't get a touch. That was one. They didn't score. Probably not going to happen the next time down? No, nope, I don't think so. Ooh, and a collision with Fauntleroy and Watkins. And she crashed hard. I mean, that was a collision right under the bucket. Mackenzie Forbes asking the officials to take a look at it. Did Fauntleroy extend the arms, I think, is what USC is wondering. I think that's just a hard play. Yeah, she never reestablished back in bounds. Turn it over. What was she going to do with it when she caught it under there anyway? <laughs> He's so small under there with the size. It doesn't matter to Jada and her, her dad, John, who Taught her about toughness and about using that size to her advantage at times. Watkins off the fake. High arc on that shot. Offensive rebound. And then Edwards is able to haul it out of there. There's been a measure of toughness by Baylor here in the second half. And Andrew sticks the transition three, her second in the third quarter. They have erased an 11 point deficit and are out in front over one seed USC. The push, look how hard and wide, and they don't get matched up. And when that happens, Sarah Andrews starting to see a big basket. Six zero run for the Baylor Bears to be able to take a one point lead here in the third quarter. Sarah Andrews, three triples in the game, two here in the second half. It is their transition game, the pace, the speed, not just the vertical speed up and down the floor, it's their quarter court speed and their acceleration through their sets. I think right now, Southern Cal needs to take a look at changing their ball screen coverages because Baylor's getting in the paint whenever they want. 32% shooting in the first half, 66% in the second. Here comes some full court pressure, and Juju beats it the other way for the easy lay-in. I like the switch, and I think Nikki Collin is fine with trying to change the pace of the game. You can change the rhythm of the game with your defense. You can also change it by what you run in the quarter court offensively. Terrific night continues for Rhea Marshall. Now a double-double for her, 10 points and 12 rebounds after that last bucket. Edwards into the lane, double teamed. And here comes Juju. They like a, a lot of ISO. I thought that was, oh, it was a double dribble. Yeah, they like a lot like of it. ISO ball, Beth. There's not a lot of continuity here. It's a lot of ball screen yep. stuff. A lot of one on one. Forbes into the lane, count it. If you're patient, you will get the matchup that you can expose with your size. 
This is an example of it right here. Icing ball screens, no help. Forbes with a great read and a finish and an and one opportunity. Second foul on Andrews. McKenzie, 77% shooting. Now in her third stop, she actually started out at Cal when Lindsey Gottlieb was the coach there and then transferred to Harvard before meeting back up with Gottlieb this year. I think Jada Walker, the point guard for Baylor, has a good command right now of pace and tempo that Nikki Collin wants. Of course, her veteran is Sarah Andrews. Bugs going to work underneath. Tried to wrap it. Bothered on a shot by Davis. Forbes going to take it. Collision. Offensive foul. That's her second. Good charge taken by Bella. Obtain legal guarding position, and then you can move laterally, and that's what she did, and that's a good call. Plus the lower of the shoulder probably helped that call as well. Third foul on Forbes. She sits down. So one of the big cogs offensively for Southern Cal is out. Andrews, three, good. Edwards sets the flare, then pops to the three-point line. Very well executed by Baylor. 14 now for Andrews, her fourth three-pointer. And a foul off the ball. Watch this right here. Here's the flare screen, then the pop. Her hands are ready, her feet are under her shoulders, and she's already hit a triple. Big time bucket right there to tie the game by Edwards. They are three of five from outside the line here in this second half. Watkins, the back door, drops it off. And this to Gimme inside with Marshall. And it's Baylor ball. I love that play call. I love that setup. Right now, Baylor's excited, right? They're up the line. They're overplaying. It's a great time to go back door by Lindsey Gottlieb's team. Final minute of this third quarter. Now you got to come with a little bit longer closeout on Edwards, which is going to change the space. Walker, 15-footer with the pull-up. Sometimes Nikki Collin just tells Jada Walker, don't run the play, just get to 15 feet and shoot it. She did right there to grab the lead back. They deny Watkins the right side, come with a double on her. Juju gets it back wide open for three. Got a clean look, and she's cooled off here in the third. You can run a lot of sets, but when you have this kind of explosiveness, get to your spot. All you need is two hard dribbles and a pull-up jumper. Just two, just two dribbles. Final 10 seconds. Walker again working on Padilla, weaving inside. Oh, somehow muscled it up and in. Watkins, shot blocked at the buzzer. 13 to four, Baylor run to end the quarter. And they are up four. Nice turnaround in that third quarter for Baylor, and what a swoop to the bucket for Jada Walker. And we'll hear from USC coach Lindsey Gottlieb on the other side. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to Portland. Moments ago, Angel spoke with USC head coach Lindsey Gottlieb. Coach Baylor playing with a different pace in this third quarter and has actually outscored you 26 to 14. What are some things that have to change defensively going forward? I mean, we have to decide. I thought our shot selection wasn't great, which let them get out in transition. Um, and then we weren't tough enough on the ball, and we'll be better. We got one quarter here to decide to be better. Juju Watkins with just two points in the second half as well. Is there anything that she can do differently to get things going? I think we have to get ourselves all in rhythm. I got to get her in the right spot, so let's get her in rhythm and get going. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, Watkins with 21, but just two of eight in that third quarter, and Baylor's offense 
they're smoking at 64% shooting. They changed the rhythm of the game by running the floor hard and rebounding. They got stops and they pushed. They advanced pass and USC has not matched up in transition. And when a team plays with speed and they push, you can get opportunities, you can get mismatches, or you can get catch and shoot wide open triples. And that's exactly what has happened for Baylor here in the third quarter. Bears seizing the momentum and they have the lead into the final 10 minutes for a spot in the Elite Eight and a one seed on the ropes. I don't think there was much strategy discussed in USC's huddle this time out. I think it was about the intangibles. Do you want to win or not? You, you know, like I'm sure that was the challenge that Lindsey Gottlieb issued to her group. Three starters that transferred in from the Ivy League. This is their one shot at it. And of course, the freshman phenom in Watkins, who's helped change the story at Southern Cal, and Padilla gets the and one opportunity. That's an excellent piece of execution. You get both sides of the floor, you get the skip over the top, and then you attack the closeout. And Padilla, you have to come with a long closeout because she can shoot the triple. And that's the third foul on Walker. Padilla 76% at the line. I would stay aggressive at, at Baylor. You're not trying to do anything different than you did in the third quarter right here. Expose USC in their ball screen coverage and get a piece of the paint. Fangaroy. Good box out and the rebound from Marshall. That is her 14th of the night. Pull up three and transition for four. Wow. That's a quick trigger right there. That is a push and transition to a three. She's got 14. And we've got a whistle. Uh, before the move there, a timeout called by Baylor. USC back in front just over a minute into this fourth quarter. Forbes, without hesitation, off the transition. They push. Nobody picks her up. A wide open opportunity. Triple for Southern Cal. Watch me. to 57, USC trying to join the other three number one seeds who have already advanced to the Elite Eight. 6-0 run to open up this fourth quarter for the Trojans. Good help and recover right there. Now you see an active defense yes. by USC. Look how much their body language has changed on this end of the floor. So much better energy here in the fourth quarter. Forbes, and Padilla, and Gottlieb will slam the brakes on and set something up for him. Oh. Trying to find Juju backdoor, great defensive play, and a held ball will keep it at this end. I mean, you cannot defend that any better than what Baylor just defended. You go down the lane line with the right hand. Look how she turns her head, not her body, and gets her left hand in the passing lane. That is a tremendous defensive play. That's why you run the shell drill every day, a drill that I hate. That's little Paige Bugs. Well, you don't like defense anyways, right? I don't right? like the shell drill, and no player <laughs> in America likes it. Padilla's got to beat the shot clock buzzer. Oh, and Forbes had a chance to get that, let it go, because she thought Baylor touched it. And instead, it's Bears ball. Let's see if USC can sustain that defensive energy that we just saw in the last possession. Walker probing. 
Chargs. Andrews quick to launch, short. Marshall with her 15th rebound. Andrews able to take it away on the outlet. She'll go to the rim, blocked. What a hustle play by Andrews. A tremendous defensive effort right here to strip it away from Juju Watkins. This is a terrible pass by Padilla, and Andrews hanging around makes a great steal. Good recovery to be able to allow USC to set their D. Edwards going to work on the inbounds underneath. Nice play by Davis to tip it to herself, and now Forbes. Good ball pressure by Jada Walker right here. Look how wide open the lane is. Everybody lifted above the free throw line except for the post up of Juju. And they missed her on the flash. Cannot convert. Walker uses the screen. Everybody getting a touch for Baylor. Walker behind the back, towards the bucket, short. Little Paige Bugs is there to get it. And she can rebound out of her area. She's so quick off her feet to get to the basketball. All right, can they get Juju back into it? She's missed her last five shots. And hasn't scored in nearly 10 minutes. And here she goes right here. Look at the clear out. Everybody on the left side of the floor. This is one on one. Do you want to load to the strong side here? If you're Baylor, you got to bring some help. Watkins doesn't give it a go and gives the ball up. Padilla, pass picked off. Held ball is going to go to Baylor. What a great defensive effort. Did you see Dre Edwards was leaking over to take away the penetration? You want to turn Juju Watkins into a passer in that situation. That is a really good defensive stance by Nikki Collins' team. How many times, Beth, have we seen Juju isolated one-on-one -on -one and she passes? Yeah. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. often. They forced it there. We've seen a little horns here in the second half. Foul on the shot will get Walker to the line. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Elite Eight continues tonight on TBS. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Still to come tonight here in Portland on ESPN, a Sweet 16 showdown between Duke and UConn. UConn men and women still alive. Mm -hmm. NC State men and women still alive. Let's send it over to Angel. Ada Walker is just so fast. We've seen that more in the second half, but she shared a story with us about how she never ran track, but she trained with her dad and said she wanted to be one of the quickest players that she could because she knew that she would be one of the shorter players on the floor. He challenged her to run two miles a day, and her miles would be as low as five minutes and 30 seconds. When I asked her if she believed anyone could guard her, she laughed and said they'd have to keep up. I know, Debbie, that she ran a, a shorter mile, but that's impressive. Boy, and she's uh, now hit a thousand points in her career. Angel, it's all about the marathon, not the sprint, right? Watkins misses the shot, forced to loose ball. And now Walker. Again, the pace, such a big difference here in the second half for Baylor. Way off on the shot, but cleaned up on the glass by Blackwell. And Baylor's back in front. Watkins has missed her last six shots. Her last basket was around the six and a half minute mark of the third quarter. I'll tell you what, Fault Leroy and Little Page Bugs, they are so quick and long and athletic that Nikki Collin doesn't play with that traditional five that we talked about, but those yep. two can do a lot of damage on both ends of the floor. They're excellent in their ball screen coverage. They can score when they invert to the block. He also can shoot the three. 
They forced Watkins into seven for 25 shooting from the floor. Juju gets in the lane, forces one up, looking for a whistle. None coming. This step up screens. Walker, good. Drop coverage by Marshall. Step up screen by Baylor. Wide open mid range jump shot. And now they're making more of those than they did in the first half. Under five to play and a one seed in trouble here in Portland. Spinning in the lane, going to the right hand for Caitlin Davis. I'd go right back to the same set if you can, because you know they're in drop coverage. That time it's a hedge. Oh, she's getting to her spots, Beth. She's getting to her spots. Oh, she had a career night when she went back home to the state of Virginia in the second round, and she's got a big follow-up performance here this evening. Watkins looking for the assist, and Davis will head to the line. I want you to watch how Jada Walker's gonna, here comes the step up screen right here, okay? Now watch what happens. She goes behind it, look where the defense is. That's what drop coverage is. You don't over penetrate, you dribble into space. Everyone else is cleared out to the other side. And there she's playing off the screen, getting to her strong hand, getting to the midline, right to the nail, pull up 15 footer. She's got the speed advantage on Padilla and she is going to work. Fifteen points and six assists for Walker. They have three players in double digits. Little Page Bugs has a double double tonight for the Bears. Second one good from Davis. Kayla Williams in the game for defensive purposes. Yeah, see, they they had to get Padilla out of there. To, Walker was starting to eat her up a bit, and now it's Williams. Nice move by Walker to free herself, and Williams gets the rebound. Juju going to work on the smaller defender, drops it off inside, picks up the assist. And Waffo. That's the unselfish play of Juju Watkins. Last three times she's touched it, she's passed it. She trusts her teammates. Walker on the drive. Williams able to bother the shot. Here comes Juju the other way. One on two, Watkins to the right side. Counted and a foul. You are not going to knock Juju Watkins off her line. Watch this right here. Her shoulders stay parallel to absorb the contact with the basket. And then she takes a little bump, but she keeps her focus on finishing. 23.6 rebounds and four assists for Watkins. Her first basket since the six and a half minute mark of the third quarter. And the adjustment here, Debbie, from Lindsey Gottlieb to get a quicker defender into the game yep. and Kayla Williams. It's paid off the last two trips. Now defending on Walker up top. Andrews blocked by Juju, who keeps it alive and gets it to a teammate. What a play defensively by Juju Watkins. The ball pressure of Kayla Williams on Jada Walker. Four blocks for Juju. That's why she's one of the more complete players. We're getting ready to see another one in the next game in Paige Beckers. Watkins way off. From the bench, yelling out to her, don't settle. She's been able to beat people off the bounce. Under three to go, three point lead for the one seed, USC. I had little Paige Bugs set some ball screen action right here. She's got that big on her. They go Iverson cut over the top. Andrews almost lost it. That's the screen I want right there. Now, 
Good job reversing sides of the floor by Walker. Williams able to jar it loose. Six on the shot clock here on the baseline inbounds. Watch out for Walker stepping on. She aware of the clock? Andrews, the leaner, way off. Air ball and a shot clock violation. They lost track of time. Time now for tonight's Star Stories, brought to you by Honda. And the numbers for Walker and Watkins tonight. Juju's team with the three-point lead and the ball, 2.11 to go. Forbes will handle the ball handling duties now. Trying to get it to Juju, here she is, under two to go. She's passed the last couple of times, not this time. Off the bounce, steps into the lane and draws the foul. I mean, the hang time, the change of pace, the patience in reading the second level. The other thing that USC has done is they've kept Baylor off the free throw line in the second half. They have not fouled on the defensive end. They only have one team foul, Beth. Keep an eye on that as we move closer. USC three of five in the second half. Juju is six for seven, so this gets her to her daily average. Seven makes on eight attempts. Makes it a two possession game. The one seeds, South Carolina, Texas, Iowa, all winners and all into the Elite Eight. USC trying to join them. An 8-0 run. Triggered by the defensive change to bring Williams in. Andrews gets a clean look and knocks it down. Full court pressure. That opens up the floor a little bit for Juju. She'll slow it down. Help coming from Andrews or Edwards, they make her give it up. Nobody guarding Kayla Williams. Everybody looking to load to the ball. And the pick by Andrews. And a foul called on Forbes with 1.10 to go. This is another great play right here. Cut off the penetration. Ice ball screens, keep them on one side, and active hands. That's Andrews making plays at both ends for Baylor here. That's because Walker can handle two on the ball. Makes a good read right there. Bumping a foul on Kayla Williams. Playing some of the most critical moments of her season right here. as Baylor tries to unseat a top dog. Final minute for a spot in the Elite Eight. Edwards off the flare screen. Offensive foul and a charge taken by Davis. That play was just too slow developing. It gives Davis a chance to step in and draw the foul. Possession arrow is with USC. And is Gottlieb gonna call a timeout? Yes, she is, I think. And she also uh, motioned to advance. Both teams have timeouts left. Both sides are in the ball, or uh, Let's see, SC still has a foul to give. Baylor looking for their 11th Elite Eight. They have three national championships. Southern Cal looking for its first Elite Eight since 1994 on a quest to get back to the mountaintop for the first time since they won back-to-back -back championships with Cheryl Miller and Cynthia Cooper and the McGees back in 1983 and 1984. 
If you're looking for your fir full circle moment, that first one was led by a USC freshman. Cheryl Miller did it. Juju trying to keep her hopes alive to match it. Let's see what Nikki Collin decides to do here defensively. I don't know if you want to try a, tr a quick trap, if you want to try something different. They've been pretty good and solid in their man-to-man. -man. It might not be worth the risk. Maybe just straight up good ball pressure right here. Forbes to run the show. Can you keep the ball out of Juju's hands in this set? Oh, losing her shoe is Davis. Sneaker on the deck, trying to get out of the way of Watkins. Juju, triple team, finds Davis inside, and she missed the layup. They're going to have to review this. Call on the floor, though, is USC ball. How did Davis get her shoe on and then get open under the basket? And then couldn't make the gimme. I mean, she was so wide open. Crazy the sequence the there. Is white ball that is being reviewed. It's got to be conclusive evidence to overturn it. Boy, that's a close one. Yeah. Let's see what the officials come up with. I, I think it might be Baylor's ball right here. It looks like it goes off. Yeah, that Akumafo. looks like. Yep. Right. So that the officials decide and determine at the monitor, then I'm sure Baylor's going to call timeout if it's their ball to advance it. Both coaches can utilize this time as a timeout. USC has one foul to give. That is like fingertips for both sides near the ball there. Call on the floor would keep it with USC with five seconds on the shot clock. If it goes to Baylor, the shot clock is off. Well, they're unless gonna... they put more time on at 29.3. Well, if it goes to Baylor, they're going to call timeout to advance it. In a two-point game. What a game. I mean, what a second half for Baylor. Did an incredible job of utilizing their athleticism and their speed to get back in the game. After trailing by six at the break. They missed a lot of shots in the first half, but in the second half, Baylor has really hung in there with the one seed and put some pressure on him. Game pressure right now. So you go over two scenarios with your team right now. Trojans have won 14 of the last 15 they've played. The only team better over that stretch was South Carolina. And they are still looking at it. Such a critical call here. Typically, DV Sports loads four replays into the machine, but then we got, they could have eight looks that they can look at, things that we might not be able to see. Melissa Barlow, Kevin Pettel, Cameron Inouye, the officials here tonight. are calling for more angles. I mean, if it's if it's still inconclusive at this point. Still to come, UConn and Duke, our second game here tonight. Winner of that one meets the winner of this one on Monday. It's 
It's the last matchup to set in the Elite Eight. We know Iowa plays LSU, South Carolina's got Oregon State, and Texas meets NC State. Well, and the, the thing is, is if it is Southern Cal's basketball, Beth, with five seconds on the shot clock, I think Nikki Cal, Nikki Collin, excuse me, plays it out. You know, you you got oh, a yeah. D up right here, right? No fouling, no putting them to the line. You got a fa you got to play really good D and rebound, and then if you rebound, then you can advance the ball with a timeout. So now they're going to bring Cameron in away and and look. So this is. Taking a little bit longer yeah, than usual, is, uh, but they want to get it right. Yeah, they got to. OK, they uh, are closer to a decision They come together. Here. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Okay. Again, the, the call is USC ball. And it will remain, after all, that USC ball. So you D up hard right here for Baylor. And you better rebound. If you don't get the rebound, you have to foul immediately. Down two. Five on the shot clock. 29.3 to go. Pre-switch by Baylor. They lob it inside to Watkins. And a foul with 2.9 oh. to go. Reaching in is Fowleroy. You do not want to foul. You, there were three on the shot. They invert their defense, so they pre-switch. So that when the ball comes in, you can have the right matchups. Wow. And now Watkins, who's eight of nine at the line, 84% on the season. Two makes to make it a two possession game. Three timeouts for Baylor. And USC does have a foul to give. Four-point lead for SC, and Watkins has scored the last seven in crunch time for the Trojans. Obviously, Baylor did not want to foul. Two timeouts left for the Bears, one for USC. And this is uh, on the right side of your bracket. The upper right, we already know, Iowa and LSU and a barn burner 7 Eastern on ESPN Monday night. And then later here in Portland, USC Baylor, UConn Duke fighting for those two spots. Uh, you can get a quick two here and you can extend the game. Now you don't want to foul Juju Watkins, so you score, you deny her, make someone else. And We'll see who, who she's going to put on yeah, the floor. Yeah, we'll see yeah. who she puts on the floor. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going Caitlin to foul Davis. Caitlin Davis. Yeah, 24 and white would be the one at 58 percent. So I would look for a direct feed to the block. Look for a little cross screen action here. 10-3 run over the last three and a half minutes for Southern Cal. There's, There's the, the inbound to Edwards. There's the cross Back screen. to Andrews looking for three. Banks it in. One point game. And a timeout to advance for USC. Off the window for Andrews. Sarah Andrews sets the cross screen, then comes around for the handoff. This is very well done. She sets the screen, then she comes right over for the handoff. Excellent execution, and she'll take the bank. Her fifth triple of the game, ninth for Baylor. If I'm... USC, I'm trying to inbound the ball to Juju, and I'm doing everything I can if I'm Baylor not to let her catch. Is Caitlin Davis out, or is she your inbounder with that 58% yeah, free I mean, throw shooting number? Most of the like, damage has been done by Juju. She's made 10 of 11. The other's four for six. What a shot. What a big time shot by Sarah Andrews. The most experienced player Nikki Collin has, the one she trusts the most. 
She's got five triples. Cross screen by Andrews, then she slips that ghost screen right there and steps behind the dribble handoff. And you'll take a little luck as well. That really was, nice execution. Mm -hmm. All right, so Davis is in the game. Number 24 in white is the worst free throw shooter. Let her step to the ball and catch it. If you're Baylor. She runs in the totally opposite direction. And they do get it into Watkins. Double team coming and a foul. Andrews whistled for the reach in. Her fourth. And Juju to the line, but now even two makes, it's still a one possession game. Right, so then you're going to call timeout, you're going to advance the ball. Now let's see what happens here, because you know, I, I know we've been talking about that foul that USC has to give. Mm -hmm. If you're going to take that foul, you better take it on the dribble down, not on the dribble up. You don't want to let the officials think that you could get caught in the act of shooting. 29 for Juju. Thirty for Watkins. Twelve of thirteen from the line and a massive fourth quarter for the freshman. She's got the number one seed in front by three, under 20 to go. And, and you know what, because they still have a timeout remaining, does Baylor. I'm going for a quick two here. I'm still trying to extend the game. Hey, let's take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. Sarah Andrews taking it to Juju Watkins, and Juju with a D comes up with a steal. And then her ability to get in a paint and drop it off inside. And then, of course, we know she can do this. Fill it up from outside the arc. A complete game, stuffing the stat sheet, getting an and one, and making her free throws where she is 12 for 13. Yeah. Seven of seven at the line in this fourth quarter. She has scored the last nine points for SC. Forbes has four fouls. She would be the only one who you wouldn't want to take that chance if they choose that foul to give. 14th time this season, Juju scored 30 or more. You're switching on everything if you're USC. And you do not want to foul. You don't want to stop the clock. But I still think a quick two is available, even though Nikki Collin probably has a play with both options. Last inbound, they went for the three and got it with Andrews. He's able to get over the top of the screen that time. Back to Andrews. No good. Rebound, Marshall. And a foul immediately. 16th rebound for Rhea. I didn't and like, it will be her first trip to the just, line coming up. Didn't like the options there. Just the play was too slow developing. I mean, it's Edwards and Andrews playing on the top of the floor. She did have a good look, but it was a deep three. Marshall's a 68% free throw shooter, needs one to make it a two possession game. See, the problem with going for the three, that took, it took too much time. Yeah. And as long as you still had a timeout left, I might have considered the quick two in the paint, put a little pressure on USC around the rim, not to foul, and then try to extend the game. In and out, and the final timeout for Baylor to advance. 7.5 to go, down four. She just really needed to make one to make it a two possession game. Now you gotta go for the three. They have options, does Baylor. Andrews being the best, she's got five triples. So now neither side has a timeout possession. Arrow is SC. See assistant coach Beth Burns in the huddle for Lindsey Gottlieb right now talking defense. 
with her team. And so uh, let's see, that's looks like that's the Duke Blue Devils keeping an eye on things from Reagan Richardson, ready yep. to go right there. Huge tournament so far for her with a pair of 20 point games. They have the biggest upset of the tournament so far, beating and uh, knocking out two seed Ohio State. They still have that foul to give, Beth. Yep. Just not Forbes. She's on the inbounder. Edwards for three. Doesn't get it. Out of bounds to Southern Cal with 1.2 to go. Are they going to review this? The out of bounds call on the floor is white ball. This play is under review. Might have been last touched by Juju. After just a, an incredible regular season for the Pac-12 Conference in its final campaign, they push five teams into the Sweet 16 and now trying to get a second team into the Elite Eight. Oregon State's already there. And USC, that berth within their reach right now. What a season for Baylor. I mean, what a job Nikki Collin has done. 26 wins, they won eight of the last nine. Win a couple of games to get into the Sweet 16, especially going into Castle Coliseum and knocking off Virginia Tech. One of the few upsets we've seen in the, the second round in the Sweet 16, and you can see the emotion on the Baylor players, especially Jada Walker, who played such a significant part in, in allowing Baylor to make this late postseason run. 17 for Andrews, 15 for Walker, a double-double for Little Page Bugs. Near double-double for Edwards, but a big fourth quarter for Juju Watkins. Ice from the free throw line in this and, final and, 10 minutes. Know, and you know what, the officials have to do this, Beth, even though we know the game is over because they got to get it right. The call stands, white ball. They are trying to advance in the NCAA tournament. They're being evaluated on this right now. They can't just let it go, even though the game's over. So they have to go to the monitor and look. So an inbound away from advancing here for USC. And that'll do it. Southern Cal will fight on. And this remarkable season continues into the Elite Eight. For Lindsey Gottlieb and the Trojans, they will face UConn or Duke on Monday night. Can Juju Watkins and company find a way to the Final Four? An incredible offensive performance by Juju Watkins to lead her team with 30 points on 28 shots. She was two for 11 from the three-point line. Obviously, the defensive game plan was schemed to try to limit her, but she did get to the free throw line. She had six boards, four assists, a couple of turnovers, and 39 minutes of play. Helping double figures from Mackenzie Forbes and a double-double, Rhea Marshall, 11 points and 16 rebounds. And so, move USC on. They will be one of the teams here Monday night in the Elite Eight.
So all four one seeds are now one win away from the final four. They join South Carolina, Texas, and Iowa. And let's send it over to uh, Angel Gray with Juju. Juju, you finished with 30 points in this game tonight, but you scoring the last nine points for your team in that fourth quarter, the most impressive. Can you describe what was going through your mind to make sure that you indeed advanced to the Elite Eight? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I guess we, I tried to win the game. That's all, that's all I can do. Um, for my team, we deserve it. We worked hard, so I had to, I had to make sure that um, every minute counts, every minute counted, and uh, I just tried to do my best on defense and offense. Baylor went on a run in that third quarter. Yeah, they did. In the fourth, Lindsay's message to you guys for you to then come back on a 6-0 start. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we know it, what we expect from ourselves, and Coach knows what, what uh, she expects from us. So we always do our best to make sure that she's proud of us and we're doing what we need to do. Um, Baylor's a great team. Uh, they, we knew they were going to go on a run, so it was just a matter of um, us going on a run, too, or, or try to uh, counteract that. Last year, you said that, oh, a nice little <laughs> Last year, you said you were at home filling out a bracket for the Trojans this year to be a part of it and then advance to the first Elite Eight in 30 years. Mm -hmm. To be a part of this moment, what does it mean to you? It means everything. Um, this is a moment I dreamed of. I, I didn't think it would happen so fast, honestly, but I'm just glad that um, I'm able to be a part of this team. It's so special. Um, and. It's just a testament to, to what, what can happen if you follow your dreams. So I'm just, I'm just here living proof of that. It's fun to watch. Congrats. Thank you so much. Beth. So USC advances as they knock out Baylor 74 to 70 is your final.